Morena, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us for our Zealed webinar series this morning. Um, my name is Rhonda and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. I hope everyone is surviving school holidays and are keeping safe in the various levels of lockdown that are around the country. Um, today, our webinar topic is digital tools to build resilience for your business. And there is no debate that lockdown is tough on businesses, even if you were operating a lot online before restrictions, there are always logistics and supplies, supply issues that come along with the lockdown. Our expert today is John Homer. John has worked with online and digital, digital companies for well over 15 years. He has a particular skill in devising strategies for businesses to help them grow and how to support them with tech as they develop. I'm really looking forward to um, the webinar today, uh, John. But before we get going, um, I'm just going to uh, do, just go through a little bit of housekeeping. This is John. This is um, who will be doing the webinar today for us. But just some housekeeping, um, there is a toolbar down the bottom of uh, the webinar. If you've got trouble hearing or anything like that, please just go to the left hand um, area there. There are some audio settings that you can play around with, particularly um, to help you hear. Um, then there is the what do you do if you have a question? The best place is to put it in the Q&A section. I will be asking questions at the end or breaking in and asking them as we're going through if John has time. But definitely we'll be having a Q&A section at the end. So please pop them in there and either I'll answer them as we're going or save them up to give them to John at the end. Um, you can raise a hand and that lets me know that you want to have a question. Um, but like I said, unless you want to come in on to the webinar live, it's probably best to just do it in the Q&A section. And chat, you're welcome to chat with us as well as we're going through. I will be manning the chat. Um, don't worry if you missed something, we are recording this and we'll be putting it up on our webinar library, which is on zeal.com. We also will email you out a copy of it as well so that you've got that for to go back to. So really, um, welcome, John, for Digital Tools to Build Resilience for Your Business. I'm going to stop sharing, John, so that you can. Uh, kia ora, everyone. Um, I hope that you're having a lovely morning. Uh, thank you, Rhonda, for the uh, brief introduction. Um, let me just quickly load my dock there, <clears throat> and then I'll start sharing my screen. Okay. Awesome. Can everyone see that? Um, yeah, right. we can see that. Cool. Hey, now, <clears throat> look, first of all, um, I just wanted to share with each of you on this webinar this morning, how extremely resilient each of you are. Um, you know, for those businesses and owners that are out there doing it tough and persevering through these challenging times, I really do feel for you. And I want each of you to know that what I will share with each of you today is not necessarily a silver bullet uh, to answering all of your questions. But what I will share with you is what has worked for um, a number of different businesses <clears throat> that I've come in contact with and what they have taught me in their journey. So I hope to inspire you uh, or at the very least give you some quick you know, ideas and tips to think about as you consider generating revenue in your business in these challenging times. So let's, let's get on with it. <clears throat> now, um, I'll be honest, when preparing for this particular webinar, I thought of the following. What conversations am I currently having with businesses, owners, and entrepreneurs, especially during this most recent lockdown? Now, I then summarized my conversations and then came up with the following question, <clears throat> which I want to um, consider and have you think about today. So the, so the question is, what are bold digital actions 
that you have hesitated to pursue in, in, in the past, even though you know that you will eventually be required or, you know, needing them. The reason I propose this question today is that integrated digital strategies <clears throat> are the most effective approach to digitally transforming your business. And so today I'm going to provide you with some helpful tips that you can consider um, on your digital journey. Okay, especially with building tools um, around being resilient, uh, result, resilient in your business. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure each of you have heard of the business continuity plan or have a contingency plan in place. Now, if I just reflect back on my conversations and now in last year's lockdown, the very first one. What I learned in discussions in this most recent lockdown is that a lot of businesses or clients of mine who have either, either battled or struggled or persevered or barely survived during the last lockdown is those businesses that had a digital online continuity strategy plan in place survived better off than those that hadn't. So the first, so the first tip of, the, of today is <clears throat> do you have a digital online continuity strategy plan in place for your business? Now, I'm quite practical, you know, and so let, let, me, let, me, let me share with you a practical way that you could look at this. I want to uh, have you ask yourself the following question. Can you operate your business in all or at least alert level three or two restrictions? Okay or different stages within each alert level, which is what's just been released in the last few days, all right? Um, <clears throat> another practical way that you can consider this is do you have a product or a service that you can introduce into the business and sell online, okay? Um, I'll give you an example um, of a current client of mine. Now, I have a client who's a panel beater. Now, as you are all aware, panel beaters, panel beaters, mechanics, um, you know, they, they can't operate in alert level four, you know, but can, can, but can operate in alert level three as long as strict government guidelines are followed. Now, after a number of conversations with my client in, those, in this most recent lockdown, and, and may I also share whilst he was doing his gardening, um, I identified that he was selling rustic accessory products to his clients that needed it. And it was only, a, and that was his only approach. He wouldn't necessarily sell it <clears throat> in store. He would only sell it when he's actually doing the, the project or completing his customer's work. Now, although he had a lot of time to do his gardening during late level four, he was also in my ear saying, well, how can we, you know, how can we diversify? And so we quickly turned this conversation into an opportunity of how, you know, of the following. How's about selling these, these rust accessory products online? So off the back of these conversations, we are now turning his lead generated website into an e-commerce website to enable him to sell his rust accessory products online. Now, the outcome for this client is he'll be able to sell products online during different alert levels. He will also have an additional income coming in even when he's at home doing his gardening. And three, we'll be able to create a new revenue stream for the business. Okay. <clears throat> now, of course, like all of us, your clients will also have found the effects of COVID challenging. It's important to be mindful of this as you check back in with them. So the second tip is, do you have a communication plan in place with your clients? Communication is key with clients, especially at all alert levels, not just at four, not just at three, not just at two, all alert levels. We should be staying in touch with all of our clients in each individual level, okay? And you, <clears throat> and if your 
part of all uh, part of some type of community whether you're whether you've registered with a gym your gym will be uh, or that's what well, my gym is doing it but my gym is communicating with me every stage every alert level that um, the government moves in and so um, what I encourage <clears throat> each of you to consider is put information of your commitment to the health and safety up on your website um, or even if you don't have a website on your Facebook page um, and on every client communication okay um, this is also another opportunity to look at your client base overall and to see if there are new markets that you may want to diversify into. Um, now, some other digital tool, tools that you can consider if you're not already doing so <clears throat> is email marketing and offering you know, coupons, online vouchers to your customers. This works really, really well if you're considering um, you know, having the end user purchase a coupon now and then coming in store to get their product once we come out of alert levels or getting them to utilize the on online offer or coupon so that they can purchase <clears throat> that, that uh, or use that online offer or, or coupon on the website so that they can purchase your product. The other, the other tool that you could potentially use is a really cool and new uh, tool. Um, you may know it as chatbots um, or chatbot solutions. Um, we have a solution called IzzyBots, uh, which is a fantastic uh, solution for many different shapes and size businesses. Um, <clears throat> the main reason why I say it's a really interactive uh, solution is because it's automated. It's an automated social, social messenger marketing solution to enable you to stay connected with your customers, but also so that you can stay connected with uh, your unknown audience. Now, we, also, we all know that <clears throat> you have a market. Or well, if you're in business, you probably already know who your A, B, C, and D clients are. But what about your unknown clients? How is about those those, that audience that you don't necessarily interact with because they're not a customer yet. Well, one, uh, one real good way of, of reaching that audience is using uh, IzzyBot chatbot solution because uh, you're able to custom tailor your, your, your requirements. We're able to map out a really cool um, wireframe so that it enables you to connect with the audience that you're wanting to connect with. But as a result of that, you're interacting with them any time of the day. <clears throat> and so the, what better way of staying connected with your customers utilizing a tool like that? Now, <clears throat> the, the other tip that I wanted to share with you is much like in the most recent Delta variant lockdown, um, rather than just returning to the way that you always ran things um, and try to keep thinking um, the way that you were thinking prior to lockdown, is try to keep thinking innovatively uh, when it comes to your business. And, and what I want to sort of share with you is um, take this approach. Use innovation to augment and not necessarily replace people. Um, I think a lot of businesses think that <clears throat> that by going and moving towards technology that you're going to replace people. Um, in some areas, you probably have to, but try not to. Try to think of ways of, you know, using innovation to expand the business, to expand and to create efficiency and not necessarily replace people. Um, one of the one of the solutions that Zealed uh, have is being able to enable our staff to to obviously work from home, which is what we're doing here, um, and we've worked from home since the last lockdown, um, and businesses flourished as a result of it. More businesses have had more conversations with us as a result of this whole lockdown. Now. Keep an, uh, keep an open mind and take time to really think and plan. You just never know where there might be a new marketing opportunity. 
And much like my panel beater earlier, um, it was only during him doing his gardening and having conversations with me on the phone that we realized that there was an untapped market, an untapped opportunity that um, he never really thought of. But after having conversations with me, and don't get me wrong, I didn't think that was anything going to come of it. Um, but it wasn't until I, I sort of dug a little deeper and he explored the, the idea of actually this could potentially work. And so, um, you know, the, you just never know. Have conversations. That's what I'm saying. Um, continue to update your clients or at the very least have conversations with them. You often find out improvements that you need to be made to your systems and your process processes. And, and these are actually other good ways of identifying how to streamline your processes. Google's a really good way of, Google, real good example of that. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is Google, when, when, when they want to improve something, they actually go to the market or in, in most cases, they actually go to their staff and they send this, this email out to all of their staff saying, hey, this is, this is what we're thinking. What do you think? And then as a result of that, they get all this feedback and they refine that feedback and they refine the feedback. And then as a result of it, they improve processes, they improve systems. And in most cases, they improve the search, which is why Google is a fantastic search platform. So, um, you know, build on what you've learned from lockdown level four in last year and the most recent lockdown. Um, but consider new technology that could help your business move forward. Now, <clears throat> another idea of also um, considering is review your current website content management system, okay? Um, and, and the reason why I, I, I say that is, does it actually serve its purpose in, a, in all alert levels? Um, much like my example of the panel beater, he never thought that he would ever have an e-commerce site, um, or at least, at the very least, he never ever thought that he would be selling anything online. But um, as a result of our conversation, conversations, we were able to diversify his and, and flip his business so that he was able to do what he loves doing, which is panel beating, um, you know, and, and doing all of the hands-on stuff. Um, but he was, he, he was able to change his thinking and look at how could he diversify his business, sell a product online or products online, and introduce a new revenue stream to his business. So that when he's at home doing his gardening in the next alert level four, and touch wood, it doesn't happen again. But if it was ever to happen again, he knows that there's a revenue stream that he's able to receive income from. Um, and, and instead of um, having no income or just relying on the wage subsidy or whatever it might be. Um, I want to also pose this, that much, my, much like most cafe owners, um, you know, they've, they've, they've had a really tough time, cafe owners, restaurants, uh, and, and a number of other businesses that operate um, in alert level four um, and, and, and and, and rely on retail. You know, that retail sector, that tourism sector, you know, I feel for them, okay? But a lot of these cafe owners, these restaurant owners, they've also moved as a result of, 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 of the challenging, these challenging times. They've gone to e-commerce to enable, you know, enable their customers to purchase um, products, um, their food, their, 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 their coffees, online so that they're taking contact with payments, you know, to operate during alert level three. So another good example of how businesses are diversifying as a result of these challenging times. Now, <clears throat> just to carry on and continue on around some of those examples, um, I just wanted to also share with you some examples of new technologies that you could consider um, and what they take the shape and form of, okay? Now, <clears throat> with any business um, that, that, that is a, 
that is a service-based business. So they don't sell anything. A service-based business could be um, anyone from, for example, a consultant um, or an accountant. So they don't sell a product, but they, they, they sell for their time or they sell their service. Um, one of the ways that, they, that I know and having conversations with is um, some service-based businesses are considering uh, looking at their website technology. Um, and what I mean by website technology is, does your website enable you to become e-com friendly um, so that you're able to take contactless payment or um, are, are you considering selling a product much like my panel beta client? Um, does it enable you to have that e-com uh, function? So, so look at that website technology um, when considering um, new technology. Um, for example, um, a website content management system that has e-com functionality. Um, one example is WooCommerce, which is the e-commerce uh, version of WordPress. Uh, another um, content management system that you may be familiar with uh, is Shopify um, or Magento or Magento 2. Um, or if you've dealt with Zeld before, uh, we have our proprietary content management system, which is a, a, an equivalent uh, e-com um, uh, advanced system uh, called Zest. And, um, and that's our, pre, uh, our propri proprietary content management system. So, you know, just another example of new technologies is your website technology that you're currently on at the moment. Uh, for some of you, you may be on one of these technologies. For some of you, you might be on a, a do-it-yourself technology like Wix or Weebly or something else on those lines. Um, <clears throat> some other technology that you could consider thinking of is if you're considering integrating <clears throat> your website with the likes of Google Shopping or with the likes of Facebook Shopping, um, so that you're selling your product directly on these platforms um, and the buyer um, who is purchasing uh, that particular product is purchasing it off your website content management system, thus enabling you to sell products directly to your customers instead of having to um, try to fight against so many other competitors. But yeah, integration, of, of functionality and, and that's just one example of um, you know Google shopping or Facebook shopping enabling you to do that. Um, another example of uh, new technology to, to really help you create efficiency in the business if you're if you're a business that whether it's service based business or whether it's um, e-com um, you know uh, uh, e-com products being sold, um, you may want to integrate your website with an accounting software like Xero or MYOB. Um, and the main reason why most businesses consider this option is that they no longer have to manually download or upload spreadsheets of their sales or products being sold each month um, onto their Xero and, and have it all reconciliate back. Um, there are software <clears throat> and integrations that we can do so that it, it takes care of all of that for you. So that um, when a purchase is made on your website, if you're an e-com uh, business um, or you're selling at least products in store in your shop and you want to sell them online, we can integrate your website with your Xero or MIOB uh, accounting software to make it easier for you um, to make things more efficient, um, to free you up time, to enable you to do what you need to do or spend time with your family. Um, for a lot of service-based businesses that I've come in contact with, what a lot of them often um, do is, is, is you know, appointment meetings and consultancy work. Um, and so you know, a recommendation that I often you know, share with them is, well, do you actually have a, an online booking calendar system and integrated with your website? And for those business owners that say, well, what the heck is that? Um, 
all I just say is, well, it enables your end user to book in an appointment with you and it books it straight into your calendar. It sends them an email saying that they've booked a meeting with you. It sends you an email and it books the meeting in your calendar in a few seconds. And in most cases, they're like, oh, cool. That, that sounds really good. It, uh, it takes me off the phone of having to talk to them for 10 minutes and all we get out of it is, in a, is a meeting book. But um, the, only pre, the, only, the only advantage of a phone call is that you're able to pre-qualify those those potential meetings but we can add in other um, contact forms so that you've got a questionnaire if you want um, to to enable that end user to fill in a couple of you know uh, a couple of things that you might want them to drop down with a couple of answers and then boom you've booked the meeting in with that client and 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 the the great thing about a booking calendar system is that um it it actually enables you to plan out your availability. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I had one client that said to me, um, uh, I, I wanna pre-qualify my client that, um, that, that comes through my website, but before they book, me, book in a meeting, I wanna be able to preset the days and times that I'm available. And so, so I says, yeah, we can do that. We can customize the fact that, you know, for Mondays and Fridays, for example, um, you want to be, we, we'll just blank you out so you're fully booked so they can't book those two days. But we, but we can make sure that we can book time in for appointments anywhere on Tuesday, on Wednesday from 9 to 11, and then from 12 to um, 3. You know, so we can preset those and configure those uh, requirements for a client so that it enables the end user to only see the, the availability of, of the client and when they're available um, to have a meeting. OK, so we can we can do whatever it is that you want. Um, that's the great thing about technology is that um, if you can think it, <laughs> we can probably do it. OK, um, so what? You know, so what I, um, you know, Zealed, I think that's what I love about Zealed is that they have a huge interest in businesses evolving with their customer, uh, mainly based on their customer requirements. So if you have some bold or radical ideas that you've been thinking about, that you've been wanting to do to make your business flourish, then why not, you know, why not, uh, uh, give us give us a call or send us an email or send me an email and we can discuss how we can help okay because it's only through conversations that anything gets done well that's that's my my saying anyways um, <clears throat> but um, I just wanted to um, say um, that that it's been a pleasure um, uh, sharing with you some of these ideas and once again, if you've got some bold and radical ideas, please give us a call. Thanks, John. Um, do you want to just stop your share there for me? Oh, thank you. I've just got some questions. And if anyone's got questions, please pop them through on the Q&A section there. But what, one of the things that I was thinking about, John, as you were presenting there, is that, um, you know, obviously... Uh, all the lockdowns, et cetera, have made it very obvious that we need to come up with contingency plans, think outside the squares to keep our businesses going. But I think it's not a new concept. You know, business, there's always change in the world and always the need to um, have these contingency plans and, and know how to move your business from one step to another and deal with things. And I think one of the um, examples that I thought of was, um, you know, changes in technology, like there used to be a video store in every town, right, across New Zealand, and now there's no video stores, and that's because of, um, you know, movies now being all online, or even bookstores, and, and the bookstores are really the interesting one to me, and yet they've, I've seen a new bookstore open recently, and um, I think it's Parnell, and it was it was interesting to see one open where I had I'd, you just kind of seen them closing for so long. Yet the, I think they've done a brilliant job this new store at figuring out how to pivot 
a bookstore to be really attractive in today's market. Um, and when you go in, you can understand the types of books. They're just beautiful collector's editions, really um, not, not just the, you know, the, the quick paperbacks. They're just beautiful books. And so I think they've done a really good job. And so I was thinking, you know, that this kind of environment that COVID has given us has kind of escalated our need or our awareness to need to change. But I think it's always been there. It's always going to be there. I just wondered what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, I, I funny enough, I had this conversation when visiting um, a comic store um, out in Onehunga. Uh, my son loves comics, and um, he's like he's been asking me during this most recent lockdown, can we go and purchase something? So I went online, and there's no online store for this mm. for this only hung a comic store and um but 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 you know going back to when we had gone in store i i was talking to the owner and i said hey um how's business been and and he actually funny enough he actually said it's been gangbusters like like and and this is when it was open right mm. and, and i haven't had a conversation since because i haven't been able to go back but but what he did say was he said that um, he and, and this is a, this is I suppose where I got my my inspiration from in regards to well what should we talk about today? Um, he he sort of said I've been thinking of these ideas of what I should be doing, but I just haven't been I haven't had the faith to go there if that mm. makes sense. Um, one because. He's got a shop to pay, to, you know, to rent to pay. Um, two, he's got all of these mag, mag, mags or comics that need to be sold. Um, and he's got other costs that are involved, right? Um, which is like every other business. But he, know, he, you know, the funny thing, he said, I know I probably need to sell online, <laughs> you know. And I said to him, hey, man, I actually work for Zeal, we digital marketing agency, you know, mm -hmm. went through my spill and I just sort of shared with him, hey, we can help you get there. Mm -hmm. But but it's up to the, it's, I suppose it's up to, you know, it's where he's in the journey, you know, it's where he's um, wanting to take that next step and, you know, we can only provide the tools for enab enabling him to make those decisions. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's what I love about Zeal and that's what I'm, why I'm a huge advocate of of Zelda's because, you know, last year we took it and we took a bold radical step in providing, um, you know, business SME businesses the opportunity to go online and get e-commerce, you know, which is this for get free. E yeah, get e <laughs> yeah, get e-commerce websites for free, right? Mm. Now we didn't have to do that, mm. but it's because you know what we're for Kiwi. We're all about Kiwi. We're all about, you know, moving and helping Kiwi businesses move forward. And 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 he goes, you know what, John? Hey, I might take you up on that offer, but but let me just do some numbers and let me just look at where my plan is. So it really, for me, I think it's about where that customer is and that customer journey. Much like the um, my panel beater. Like I said, he, you know, he actually called me about something else. And then I just asked him, hey, man, how's, how are you? Like, forget about yeah. the business. How are you? <laughs> how was yeah. your mental health? And, and that's where my conversation headed. And then off the back of that, he started talking about, oh, you know, when I'm going to do work and I'm doing projects and I'm completing the, you know, the, these panel beating jobs, I often end up um, providing a, an, a rust accessory product. And I'm like, well, where do you get these rust accessory products from? Mm. And then he's like, oh, I've got a supplier that supplies. And I'm like, well, how much do you have on stock? And then he goes, oh, I normally only have about 30. And I says, well, how much do they cost? You know, and then he goes, like 30 bucks. And I was like, well, why don't you have 2,000 of them? Why aren't you selling them online to the whole mm. of New Zealand? And then he was just like, oh, my goodness, John. He yeah. dropped it. I think he dropped the spade. <laughs> I think that's right, right? It's it. We, I think um, we understand that businesses have a lot on, you know, just surviving. But at the end of the day, you've got to come up with these contingency plans because another thing that can happen, you know, COVID's one, 
changes of technology, your products are maybe not quite as attractive anymore because things move on, like the bookstore, video store game, I mean, examples. Um, mm. But you've also got things like just even staff turnover. You could have a key member of staff that you really rely on to deliver your products or your services, you know, someone that you rely on and, and then they move on. So you've got to think of contingencies beyond COVID, you know, I think we're really into COVID at the moment because that's where it, it's, it's kind of escalated our awareness of needing to get online, but still there's, there's this bigger picture of contingency that we've got to keep in mind when running our businesses. Yeah, and I think that's why I sort of alluded to, hey, you know, when we're looking at innovation and when we're looking at new technologies, it's not necessarily about, hey, we could actually replace this person or replace a, a staff member. It's about, well, how can we utilize them both um, and create efficiency so that the staff member can be more productive? Um, hey, look, if businesses have to um, reduce staff numbers because they just have to, then I get it, you know. But, but we also have solutions where there's outsourcing solutions as well, you know, that we can have with clients um, that are going, that, that are potentially considering that um, because we have real um, fantastic talent <clears throat> that we can help, you know, Kiwi businesses to flourish even in these challenging times. Mm. I was also thinking that this week we had Facebook go down, we had WhatsApp go down and Insta go down. And uh, you were talking about how your gym was keeping you well abreast of changes with COVID levels. But, you know, and social media is really um, useful for that. But you've even got to have contingency plans to your comms. I, my mum was actually in hospital uh, during that period this week. And my family rely on WhatsApp to communicate because um, I've got sisters in Australia, the States, Auckland and Wellington, and she's in Wellington. And we, you know, we have this chat to keep us abreast of how mum's doing. Mm. And suddenly I couldn't use it. I felt very disconnected from what was going on. And it, it, it actually felt a little old school to go back to email, <laughs> you know, um, to communicate. <laughs> and it took me a while to figure out that actually this, you know, we can commu communicate via email. And I think that's just another example of needing to change the way we're thinking and be change and movable. Um, and for some of us, it might be actually to move on to social medias in order to communicate, because that is better for our particular clients. But others, it might be, okay, plan B, C is then to use email, or it might be to put a post up on our, you know, our own website or something like that. And I think that's, it's worth to reflect on and come up with a plan. So you're not stressed in that moment. You've already got a plan. Plan B is to do this. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, if I think about, I'm part of the city fitness community. And so uh, last year, um, they didn't have an app. And so when we went into lockdown, all they were using was the, the text messaging and also the um, Facebook messenger uh, or Facebook page. Um, as a result of that, you know, they created, they had an app launched, uh, I think it might have been might have been September of last year, um, but see, they they were forced to to change so that they could mm. communicate with their thousands and hundreds of thousands of members, right? Mm. And so, much like what you said, when Facebook or when you know Instagram go down, they communicate with everyone through their app, um, you know. And if their app goes down, I think they then do the reverse. They, you know, right. communicate with Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you've got to kind of have these contingencies. I think it's just a was really timely this week that social media went down <laughs> and, and several platforms to illustrate there's another another reason why contingencies are important and putting these plans into your business are important. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, John. Nice. Hey, I'm just going to close up now. We've come um, kind of done our time. I really appreciate it, John, um, the, the things that you've shared with us today. No but, worries. It's helped us to know that it is never too late to plan and make changes to build robustness to your business processes. 
and we have an opportunity to review your experiences during these last lockdowns, list what went well and what could have gone better, and from this, draw up a plan of action. Remember to use, uh, it's our recommendation to use the lockdown experiences to review where your business is at and plan contingency plans and to make contingency plans. Um, Zeld has helped over 15,000 businesses transform digitally over the last 20 years. If you'd like support to setting up marketing automation or even getting an idea around a potential digital strategy for your business, then please get in touch. We provide free strategy or website audit sessions with our team of experienced digital, digital business strategists, which John is one of them. Um, and like John mentioned, um, our GEM or Get E-Commerce Movement initiative is available to all small to medium sized business who need to get online. Um, we offer free website builds for e-commerce service and charity businesses with no sale, no hosting fees arrangement for the first 12 months. So if you'd like to know more or know someone who could benefit from these week free website builds, please um, direct them to us at zeal.com for more information. And this is a genuine um, heartfelt program that we're doing to help Kiwi businesses with, that are doing it tough. Our next webinar is on in a fortnight's time on the 20th of October at 10 a.m. Um, it's going to be introducing stuff ed ads and how to learn how to get your business in the news. Um, we're lucky to have Chloe Masters from Stuff joining us to discuss the new ads platform that puts power of advertising on Stuff in the hands of small businesses. Stuff is New Zealand's largest locally owned news site and Stuff ads give you the ability to turn your readers into customers. A really special thank you today, John, for your time and your wisdom. Really appreciate it. Um, I've really enjoyed today and um, if you've missed any part of today's webinar or you'd like to see it again we will be posting a, vi a video of the webinar on our YouTube channel on zeal.com and we will also be mailing it out to you. If you know of anyone that could benefit from um, attending these webinars please share the links with anyone. Um, we just are here to try and help and support you. We wish you all a safe uh, week and hope that um, we get out of lockdown soon and things get back to so-called normal. But take care. See you soon.